Hello folks, welcome back and today we're going to be doing this. Yes folks, we're going to be creating procedural fire inside of Nuke. No plugins, no 3D softwares, just pure Nuke and I'm going to show it to you straight from scratch. So let's begin. <coughs> So this is my uh, this is my setup, and as usual, I'm gonna be breaking down on the things that I did, and uh, show you the the values of every node. So let's start with this layer right here, the bread and butter, the fire. So first, I create in a noise, always. I put RGBA and then I go to the transform tab and I animate uh, the Y so to show you that one <coughs> I grab a noise dial it down go to the transform tab and I click 2 on the scale and I crank up the height so kind of like that and then I animated the Y so you get the idea <coughs> and from the noise I grab a grade channels RGBA black point 0 0.13 white point 0 0.55 so it makes the white values brighter and the dark values darker. So if you A, B it, that's how it looks like. Alright. And then <coughs> I grab a constant with a red orange value. And then I copy pre mold it with this alpha right here. That's, that's it. Right there. And from there, I made a noise so I can use it to distort this uh, information right here. So from the noise, to set up the distort noise, I animated a Z, frame 1, to frame 100, right there, and I grab a copy and from the copy I set it to forward dot u right there just forward dot u and I grab an I distort and I change the UV channels to forward and I play around with the UV offset and the UV scale so to demonstrate that one I gotta put copy A and B and then I put forward U and then I grab an I distort and then I just use uh, UV channels forward and then I play around with the UV offset and the scale so you could see that it's <coughs> slowly <coughs> distorting itself. There. So from there, I made another noise distort. But this one is a little different. It has minimal values in it. Right there. I still animate the Z and I believe I crank up the gamma for this one yes I, I bring down the gamma to 0 0.025 and again it to 0 0.54 and then I grab a copy and I switch it to forward V this one right here is forward U but this one right here is forward V and I grab another I distort node 
in UV channels, set it to forward, and I play around with a UV offset. You could put in whatever values you want, just uh, depends on what you want. So if you compare the previous eye distort to the first one, that's how it looks like. It has more distortion on the second one, but on a different, uh, different movement. So now that I have that, I was thinking this one doesn't look like fire yet. So I made, I made this, I made this roto. It's not animated. It's just one stale roto that is feathered right there. So to demonstrate, <coughs> to press O for roto and just left click just left click it there and I only select the top part and press E to feather it out you could adjust the uh, sometimes the feather feathering looks weird on this one so you just have to <coughs> adjust it manually sometimes especially if the points are too near to each other just have to manually do that. <clears throat> so you get the picture. And then I add a little blur. <clears throat> and then I use it to merge mask this information. It looks like that. So if you play it, <clears throat> now we're starting to see something. Doesn't look like much yet, but you know, we're, uh, we're going to that direction. So, after that, I thought, you know what, it still doesn't look like a fire. I mean, the movement still doesn't look like a fire. I'm, let's worry about how it looks like later, but I'm worrying about how I can make it move like a fire. So I added another type of noise. <coughs> XY size is 370. And still animated the Z. From frame 1 to 0, frame 100 to 5. And the noise kind of looks like this. It's bigger. So it has bigger movement. Just to give that the fire information big movement. And then I uh, grab a copy, still forward V. You could either use forward U or forward V. And then I grab an eye distort. <coughs> you see the difference right there? Now it's being like, it's like there's a wind blowing in it. And then I don't like the edges on the information. So I was thinking, you know what? Let me give it a little blur on the height. So I grab a blur and I blur it. I click the 2 and I blur the height to 32. So if you disable that one, so you get like a upward motion. So I have that. So now, I was already satisfied with how it looks like. So let's, uh, let's ramp preview a couple of frames and we'll see how it looks like. Okay. Yeah. Looks pretty good. I was uh it was all right. It's, it's not the best, but you know, kind of moves like a fire. So now I'm starting to concentrate on how it's going to be how it's going to look like. So from this color, red, I grab another constant which is a little bit orange. And then this one, I shuffled it on the red channel and I graded, I switched to RGBA, black point, adjust the black point and adjust the white point. The reason, what, well, if, if you want to go back here, the reason why I shuffle it to red is this one. If you go here and you press R, G, 
B the information that gave me much is only the red channel there's less information on the green and less information on the blue so that's the red channel right there <coughs> so that's why I shuffle it on the red channel because it gave me a lot of information to work on and I grade it up just to like kind of eat out erode a little bit of the information because I'm gonna make like a core for the fire and then I gave it a blur of six and then I use it as an alpha to copy pre mold the constant and then I merge it over the fire so if you compare it like that <coughs> yep starting to look like one but we're not done yet so same thing I did on this yellow constant I grabbed the fire information I shuffle the red channel grade it up but I grade it in a bigger value so I can have this tiny core in the middle blur it <coughs> copy pre mold it and it gave it a little bit of glow and then merge it over this value <coughs> so if you AB it that's how it looks like and then the third one is the the core itself like the the because they say that the fire is hot when it's white so again I shuffle the red channel I grade it doesn't look like much but if you go to other frames it has this tiny little spots on it that's what I wanted right there copy pre it gave it a little bit of glow and then merge it over now you have that <clears throat> and then I gave it a little bit of glow and then I blur plus it for I mean for the glow values I just use one size 30 and then for the blur <clears throat> first blur I gave it 27 and I merge plus it to 0.5 if you compare it give it a little bit of umph to the glow then the second glow is 400 with a plus value of 0 0.08 so if you a b this one see that one right there that's a nice pretty glow all right so if you jump on different frames it's a little heavy now <coughs> yep I'm already uh, I mean it's not it's not super realistic if you compare it to other uh, third-party plugins but uh, this purpose is you know if you're in production and you run out of time and they want some fire in there you could always use a footage or what if you don't have any footage well you go nuke and create one so then I I got the fire going on and so I grab a, uh, a brick texture right there I grab a brick texture I color correct it but I did something here that is you know a, a really good technique but I'm gonna explain it to you how I did it <coughs> but first before I jump into the background let's talk about the embers which is this one because fire will always be cool if you see a little bit embers that are coming out from from the top so those are the embers and it's really cool right there <coughs> so I grab a noise and I bring down the size to 9.6 animated the Z as usual and then I adjust a little bit of gamma and a little bit of the gain and I animated the translate you could you could animate it however you want I grab a grade 
RGBA, white clamp, adjust the black point to 0 0.9 just to take out you know those little little less details on it and added a blur uh, I just adjusted the height added the blur on the height and I use a copy pre-molt I use it as an alpha to copy pre-molt this value right here and then I just copied the setup that I did over here I just copied it and put it over here it gives you that weird looking shape and then I also copied the this rotor right here the fire copied it here but then I uh, try, uh, I scaled it up on the height so it kind of looks like this and then give it a little bit of blur give it a little bit of glow and then I added a multiply of 7 to crank up the value right there sometimes when you when you just use it like this it's nice but then you can't see it sometimes so when you add a multiply it cranks it up so now we get the embers and now we get the fire let's go to background so I downloaded a background of course reformat it to the stage size and then I kind of add a little corner pin <laughs> because the angle of the the torch is like eye worms view so I kind of mimic the wall to do that <clears throat> and I'm gonna disable this one first and I'll explain to you after what I did and this one too <clears throat> and this one so <laughs> sorry about that <clears throat> So we get the background and we merge the fire and we merge the embers and then I blur plus the embers just blur plus it you could do whatever value you want and then I added you know a torch I just downloaded it Google and then I you know just edited it Oh, I forgot. I could also show you a technique right now on how to to take out the background without using Roto. So I downloaded this image. It has a white background and just transform it and then we format it to the stage. <laughs> but then I got lazy on, on rotoing the, the white thing. So what I did was I shuffled it to the blue channel because it has more it has more information in it compared to other channels shovel to blue and I grade it up and I grade when I grade it up when you crank the values let me demonstrate it to you so you grab a grade switch it to RGBA click white clamp and then you adjust start adjusting make this make the torch black and make this guy white so see it automatically inverts it when you surpass a certain value so that's what happened here so it gave me that nice information it has a little bit of weird thing going on here but we could fix it so what I did was I fixed it with a roto paint and I did it on frame 91 <laughs> I don't know why but when I look at it like oh frame 91 whatever so I frame hold it on frame 91 and then a mask it <laughs> make a quick garbage mat to mask it and I filter road alpha and I blur it and I copy and I use this information as an alpha to copy pre mold this guy so that's the alpha so I did it with a minimal roto like a really garbage roto 
and then I did the transform color correct <coughs> little bit of color adjustment give it a little bit of crop to clean the edges and I merge it right there so now it kind of looks like fire but it's, it's weird because the wall is too bright so what I did was and I have now I'm gonna explain this guys right here I gain it down to 0 0.022 and from there see this postage stamp right here I postage stamp this fire and I shuffle it to alpha channel and I grade it <coughs> RGBA white clamp graded to 0 0.2 on the on the white point to give it like a little bit of solid alpha going on and I erode facet, delete it, and I blur it. My purpose this one is to create an interactive light to the wall. Because this light will act as a fire. So it's it's kind of like interacting, it's like the fire is interacting with the wall. Because, yeah. So then I, I made another one right here with a different value of the dilate the first one was 169 the second one is 39 and then I gave it a blur of 100 the first one was 150 the second blur was 100 and then I color correct it like a core right there and then I gave it a little bit of multiply right there so it's very subtle subtle values but it makes the footage uh, uh, you know, believable and then I grab a noise like you know typical noise animated Z and then I use it and then I use this guy right here as an alpha to mask the noise because I'm gonna use it as a distortion to this guy to the background so if you come in closer see it's distorted it's like a heat distortion just this area right here so now I have the background with an interactive lighting from the fire with a heat distortion and a merge to fire and then I merge the embers plus the blur plus and then I merge over the torch and I want the torch and the fire to interact with each other so I gave it a light wrap so light trap you could connect it to the to the background right here it's the background and that's the torch the torch is a the background with the fire is B and the setting on the light trap is 28.5 diffuse, 17 intensity, check the three boxes right here, foreground blur 3.4. Then you merge plus it, so if you, if you see the difference right there, see right there? Now the fire is interacting with a fire torch. And I gave it a little bit of sharpen just to make the footage clear and then I call this guy the blurriator because it blurs the crap out of the footage right there boom but what I do is from that blur 96 you plus it back to the original footage so it gives it that like nice soft heavenly look which I really like and then I gave it a little bit of chromatic aberration this guy right there <laughs> you can you can always you don't have to do this but I kind of like the look as long as it as long as you use it minimally because sometimes when you overdo it it looks really weird uh, the setup is just God rays you know scale 1.013 the gamma is 1 just basic setup and then the and the, I turn off the red and the blue channel only the green and then the next god ray 
I turn on the red and the blue but turn off the green and then I blur it out and then I animate the dissolve right there and I made a vignette same thing I'm gonna roto invert it and blur it 150 and then you use color correct gain it down to 0 0.5 Cool, eh? And then I gave it a crop, and then I write it as a JPEG. So that is, so that's it, folks. That's how you make a fire procedurally inside of Nuke. Well, hope you guys learned something. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe and like my video and hit the bell so you could get uh, updates on future tutorials. Thank you very much and goodbye.